Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back inside. It's League Unlocked. My name is Eric Kummel on the Millennium Falcon. Flying hot solo today as we get two big debuts from the two big dogs in the LCK. Both Gen G and T1 making their summer debuts. And no, it's not quite against each other yet. They both get a little softball warm up before the big throwdown showdown on Sunday. It was Gen G. On the docket first against BNK Fear X. It feels like Live Sandbox slash Fear X goes through a name change basically every single split. They're getting something new, but they were in tough against the defending MSI champions in this one and really didn't waste any time carrying that momentum from MSI, specifically that momentum from the bot lane for Gen G, the team or the squad we time and time again were calling to level up to take Gen G to the next level. It started at MSI and it has continued one series in. Uh, it was the Zeri for Pays and not only are they carrying well, but they're putting the eggs in the pays basket again because he had he was flame horizoning henna in this matchup obviously paired with the lulu they were really investing in this zeri and he's even getting cs from the likes of chovy so you know that gen g uh, has confidence in this guy when you're taking cs over from the cs master himself and of course it all culminates in that investment paying off because the final team fight to clinch the game already nearly a 10k gold lead for Gen G. They're going to grab a Baron and just for good measure. By the way, Chovy uh, was the focal point for Fox in this entire set. The Skarner for clear, constantly trying to catch out Chovy, bring him in, and he does in the final team fight. But your boys forgot about Zeri. That is, you believed it. Cash it in, lock it up. Only the Skarner left. A pentakill for Pays. This guy already has nine career pentakills, six pentakills uh, in terms of, you know, LCK or bigger tier one regional play. And he's only been around for two years, basically. Not even two full years, a year and a half. So still the absolutely incredible list of accolades and achievements and statistical anomalies that Pays has continued to rack up early on in his career. Very much so in game one. Game two, it's uh, the run back again for Mr. Chovy on the Corky. Probably felt like he didn't quite get enough CS in that first one. But this was less about Pays as he's on Senna duty in this one. And more about Canyon on the damage dealing Karthus. Who he got, I think, three kills early on to kind of rack things up. Even though uh, Furex was getting some kills uh, back this way. And even had the kill lead for a little bit. You still felt as though Genji was in control of the game. And the big pivotal moment is having keen split push on this Twisted Fate. Genji forfeits the Baron. They give it over to Furex. But it doesn't matter because in trade they get this bottom in hip for Keen As well as the Infernal Soul. So even though it seems like it's going to be a positive in the way of Fox. Genji more than enough gets a trade across the map. Keen was immaculate on that split pushing DF. And then you got Canyon flashing over getting a uh, pretty gnarly smite steal on the Elder Dragon to close this one out. Chovy gets to survive the final fight this time. He's even sneaking a Herald there. Or not a Herald, a Rift Scuttler when they basically secured the game. But my man is still trying to get a little bit of extra gold per minute. Stack up those CS numbers. But it's a 2-0 pretty con convincing fashion in the way of Gen G. They look all warmed up for that big date against T1. But again, Pays being the focal point and Keen continuing to thrive. Have a career resurgence basically half a decade after we were hyping this dude up on the Afrika Freak, so business as usual for Gen G. T1 side of things, they were matching up against Nongshim, and truthfully, it was probably business as usual for them as well. It was just by the T1 definition of what that actually means. And the T1 definition for owner on Viego is juking an entire squad as... <laughs> Ah, uh, Nongshim completely chased this Viego across the map. Listen, he dodges some abilities 100%. The Sejuani ulti whips. They even get the stun here, but he's able to dash out away from the Nara. Then he's under turret. The miss from Viego. Oh, God bless. Dudu tries his best on the Nara, but... 
he has absolutely no chance of catching that one. So the ulti over to survive. He goes right instead of left. I guess he's dodging the ulti there. That would make sense for him to go that way. So I understand uh, deciding to throw the Arctic move that way, but it doesn't end up working out. And then that Gnarl, or not all, that Gnar stun had no chance. And <laughs> that really had no chance. Owner doesn't even give a reaction. My man just scratches his head basically and is like, what? are these dudes trying to do? But that was only one mere moment from this game. Uh, the theme in this series is T1 fully getting in control and then having a classic whoopsie for fun moment as two guys end up uh, getting caught out, both Faker and Zeus. The solo laners are down. An incredibly beefy boy in Curious Tom Kench tries to contest this Baron. He ends up going down as well. So the Baron goes over to Nongshim to kind of stop the bleeding and get them back into this game. But pretty quickly afterwards, one or two team fights later, T1 turns things back around as they first are able to catch out Dudu on the Nar. He gets completely blown up. And then the rest of the squad, the Ziggs, is trying his best to do some poking. But owner. Not only can he juke a whole team, but he can steal an entire team's lineup. This guy still remains one of the most exciting Viego players to watch. And somehow, time and time again, he's the one we see fully utilizing all these resets to their absolute maximum capabilities as they finally, and I do mean finally, it took a long time for them to catch down, kill the Sejuani who was oh so beefy. Guma ends up getting the kill. That's basically the nail in the coffin for game one as T1 uh, survives. Throw in a little bit and giving up a Baron, it doesn't really matter. They take that first game and they roll into game two with the most boring stale draft. It could have been the spring split. It could have been 2023. Kasante, Vi, Azir, another Senna game. This time paired alongside the Orm for Kyria. One day, one day, I hope and pray we'll get to see Guma on something that is not Senna. But game two... Honestly, looked like you could have been watching a replay from game one because it's another solid start early uh, for T1. This time an even bigger lead earlier. Not even 21 minutes, they've already got a 7k lead. But again, two guys getting caught out. This is a massive shutdown on Zeus. Not just two guys, it's Faker and Zeus yet again who get caught out, which means Nongshim goes to the Baron. Guma confirms it by doing a little victory lap on the Rift Herald. Yep, they're on Baron, boys. We can't do anything about it. So Nongshim, again, slows the bleeding, but it's still T1 in control. And it's another Baron scrap this time. T1 is able to grab it and they're able to grab the fight afterwards. Even though it's a little bit messy, you get the nice Sharima shuffle in for Faker who had a real solid performance on, what an absolute shock, his most played champion of all time in the Azir. Even though uh, one Zix is allowed to survive. There's Faker completely blowing up. Call me. That was a solo kill, by the way. Just absolutely pops him like a balloon. Then we got a 5v4 and uh, 10k gold lead at this point. Guma is soloing an Aatrox on the side. Uh, actually disgusting that he's essentially soloing him. But Faker ends up stealing the kill because he wants MVP. He wants that POG for this final game uh, for T1. He does end up getting that. So a pair of two zeros for both Gen G and T1. Uh, okay, Gen G looks a little bit more clean, but let's be honest, most of the time T1, even when they're two zeroing in the regular season, it's not the cleanest. Maybe it's a little bit sloppy, but it doesn't matter. They get the win in again. Very meta, stale kind of picks. Very curious what the Senna pick is going to look like in this T1 Gen G matchup because at MSI, the Senna wasn't that terrifying out of T1, but we know Gen G has played so many games against T1, so many a games against Guma and Kyria. Wouldn't be surprised if they take that away from them or have some other kind of picks to counteract it. But we're getting to see all these other guys cook on Kaisa, Jinx, Zeri. Let Guma cook in the bot lane because he still is one of the most reliable carries that we have in the LCK. So hope we see that change in adaptation in the best of against Gen G. Quick jaunt over to the LPL because we've got an update on Fraud Watch. Weibo Gaming recently getting a big win to kind of step back into that category because we're getting a little bit of hope for them. NIP dropped right back into that Fraud Watch. Going up against a 0-3 and three Invictus Gaming. We jump right into Game 3 after they split the first two and... This is a classic rookie on his own LeBlanc skin in this one. Uh, had some 
up and down moments, but this was all about GLFS on the graves. This rookie coming in, absolutely popping off. Everyone's playing AP carry junglers, and my man says, give me that AD. I'm gonna flash forward and absolutely blow people up. But here's rookie using the Mega Blast Cone. Where are you going? World champion on his world champion skin. And he blast codes into four members, blows his flash, and there it is, the Graves again, basically three-shotting rookie. He had a few almost miracle escapes, but this one was a product of your own misery. Rookie, blast coding in. We saw him uh, out of attack Photic into a blast code last split. This time he's doing it to himself. He had a good laning phase, but that didn't amount to anything. And again, this Graves was just an absolute menace doing such ludicrous amounts of damage. Fotik's positioning in a lot of these team fights were not great on the Kalista. Despite the best efforts by Kashanji, he cannot get it done as, okay, Aki gets one kill on the other side. Aki, by the way, didn't look super comfortable on the Zyra or the Nidalee uh, and hasn't looked comfortable on the brand either. These AP junglers are not really his forte when it comes to jungle picks. Case in point, uh, this one when GLFS was completely gapping him on that Graves pick. But a winless IG takes down the 2-1 and one NIP to really spice up this five-man group uh, down in Group D to something even crazier now. It's completely uh, up in the air with both Ultra Prime, Weibo picking up wins. It's, it's a whole mess all around, but what to take away from it is NIP continues to be an absolute enigma, mystery, and are fully binoculars looking on Fraud Watch for both them and Weibo Gaming because on any given day, they can look like a contender or they can look like a team that should not even be on the winner side of summer placements, but... I mean, this is the only group where having a double round robin makes sense because there actually is a close power level between the majority of teams in the group. Everywhere else is just waiting to get to the next round. So Group D, the one to watch as these summer placements continue going on. We got T1 Gen G over the weekend. First week of LCS action, LEC returns. We are fully in the swing of things for the summer split, but that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric, and thank you all, you beautiful people, for hanging out. As always, we will catch you on that flippity flip.